such a fanboy of Ken over the years. Little bit of history, I found the Facebook post from June 17, 2015. Check out my signature Turbo Mac wheels. This looks like it's on a Fiesta ST. I remember seeing these and being like, I'm obsessed. <laughs> Exploded view rendering of a three-piece Turbo Mac wheel. I need this wheel in my life. This is from 2014, 213 likes. Yo, I can already see it. Let's go. Check out what she looks like on the car. I'm just gonna take a seat. I'll be here for a couple hours just uh, staring. It's so icy, it's not even funny. Look at the blue caliper. Against the blue paint with the sparkle in the paint in person. Oh man, this car is gonna be good by the time we're done. But this just set it off completely. This is the first car on the channel where I was very specific about what tire I wanted. Now I didn't get my choice, but I wanted a tire exactly like this for a certain reason. My first choice was a Toyo R1R for the same reason I like these, which are the BF Goodrich G4 Sport Comp 2s and a 245 40 18. And the reason I wanted to get these tires and something like the R1R was because of the tread pattern. Streetcar energy down the middle. Oh, it's a streetcar tire, it's a summer tire, ultra high performance, but it has this gravel rally feel on the sides that I'm just obsessed with these days and it's gonna be perfect for the RS and the RS is gonna be styled so simple the aesthetic is so simple that you can choose a more loud aggressive looking tread pattern in my opinion to add more depth to the aesthetic of your vehicle and I'm excited about that now let me come in close for some of you out there this is that's painful to hear this is not a track car this is a daily driver go out in the canyons do I need maximum grip no do I need a perfectly fine-tuned suspension no do I need it to just ride nice? Yes. Do I need to not break the bank? Yes. Can I upgrade the suspension later? For yes. So we're getting a grippy tire with the look I'm after. That's going to be nice. They're not cheap. So this is exactly what I'm after and I'm pumped about it. If you want tires like this for your car, you can click the link in the description to Fitment Industries website. If you buy your wheels from them too, you can have them mounted and balanced in their warehouse and shipped to your front door so you can mount them as soon as you get them in the mail and skip the tire shop. checking the RS out and you're like, whoa, what are those tires? If this was just a basic streetcar tire, your eyes would blow right past it. And then from the side, it just gives me gravel tire vibes. I'm excited to see this come together. fan of good family vibes hit up tires to go they're owned 
by my neighbors and you won't regret coming here. And Cole back there even put a fresh, found out it's called a duck head on the tire machine that makes contact with the wheel so that there was like no chance of it getting scratched at all. Super appreciative of them and the effort that they go through. These things are icy. Let's see if my dad's around and show him the wheels. He's on a work call, but I can take him up to his window. <laughs> He gave me one of these. I'm loading mine up for my last coat on this wheel. Kyler's finishing up that one. Kyler, what did you say not to do? Do not dress the tires no matter what you do for 24 hours minimum. The coating is hardening and it's actually curing right now to the rim. So even when you're done taking off all of the product itself, the work is not done. Like we have those rims over there. I call it marinating. Just like a nice steak, you don't want to go and cook it right out of the gate. You want to let this baby get up to room temperature. And so that's kind of my theory and thought there is just kind of leave these, let them dry 24 hours, come back tomorrow afternoon i wouldn't even mount them no, on the car no like for at least 24 hours because then we can go through we can actually dress them too i wouldn't spray dress these yet even if it the 24 hours was up i would simply go through and dress them with an applicator after that duration of time i'll just do it while they're on the ground with the applicator be real precise with it yep exactly they'll look juice when you're done this doesn't suck too bad because you can stick this in there like that yeah that's why the applicator is a lot it's better perfect yeah than this i'm not docking this applicator whatsoever. That's good for this paint. Is great for paint panels and great for glass and edges and corners and things like that, but it's not flexible whatsoever. We're rounding third base on these rims. Cam's already taking his off too. I'm giving mine a back massage over here, shoulder work over here. Yeah, and when you come back in the morning because the coating will dry and it's literally airing out, you can go through and you can wipe them off one more time too if they look a little hazy. That's just the excess coating. It's actually gassing off of the wheel itself. Voila. I mentioned raising the rear a little bit in the coilover video before we put the wheels and tires on. This car is so easy to take out the rear spring and perch. So I went ahead and did that. It's faster than trying to loosen or tighten and adjust the ride height with a bunch of load on it. It's just one bolt in the lower control arm, as you saw in the last video. So I took the measurement. I wanted to raise the car and then added what I wanted to add. Cut out a piece of tape so I can just slap this on. Get this gap right on both sides and I know I'll be even. And so I'm just going to lock these rings together with the tools. Slide this perch back up in there, tighten it, and then we can throw the wheels on. So these tires are directional and they need to be rotating forward. So we made sure they're on the right side. Yeah. Black gloves in. Dang! Sheesh! Dreams come true. We need more views to buy Parker wheels. That was better than one set of 1552. Two sets of 1552s. Dude, these tires are rad already. Uh, okay. 12 by 1.5 lugs. All right, zap them puppies on. Looks like a freaking rally car, dude. <laughs> yeah. These will be fun to clean. That's why we ceramic coated the wheat. M.O.T. Them tires are meaty, bro. The front is so much higher than it did with the other wheels. I need some fine tuning. Ta-da! Yeah, this is red. We'll get here to here fixed. That's plenty low. Oh, I look at it from this angle. It literally looks like Ken Block's creation. R.I.P. Ken. Booty pick for the boys. All I 
can think is that it looks really good, but it needs help somewhere, which the crash bar up front will help. I think a little bit better fitment dialing it in will help. Removing the black roof wrap will help. We'll, we'll figure out how to make it look spicy. I, dude, it might just be the tire letters that are missing, honestly. Once a fitment's perfect, tire yeah. letters, and it's like, okay, now that's where we left off. Yeah. Enter Justin, we're getting tire letters. <laughs> Sweet. Rally style. Yeah, it came out cool. Nice. That looks awesome. Heck yeah. Tires are good too. Yeah, when you see them with a little more light, they could be a little bit better fitment and just tighter to the fenders because they're kind of a little big on the tire, I think, for it to be like super OCD aesthetic, but it has more of a rally look. So maybe I just get mud flaps to compensate. I don't know. Yeah, right. Using my caliper tool, this gap in the front is about 1.1 inch. I'm gonna drop it a little bit less than a half an inch. So 0.4. This is how much I wanna drop it. Let's just keep it going. Let's dial it in more. Both front wheels off in the air to get all the tension off of the sway bar because when you only have one side up, it's pushing on the sway bar so hard that it's impossible to change the ride height of the coilovers. That's off. This one is off. This is the lock ring for the right height. The medium spanner wrench. You can grab it. I already broke it loose, but I showed you how to get it off. So I'm going to put it back where it was. I'm going to grab a measurement from the black piece, part of the shock, to the bottom of the second collar. Okay, so that's what I'm going to measure from. 1.57 inches. So we can go to 107, and that would lower it quite a bit. So let's get this bottom collar to meet this gap. Loosen this, and then you're going to grab this whole shock absorber and start twisting the whole thing until it lowers, which is twisting it clockwise. We'll get it to lower. It's much easier to do with two hands. Lock ring down, take my caliper tool, are we close? Oh, we're getting there. This is gonna be enough. The gap is now 1.13 inches. I'm gonna go match this on the other side. Before I do that, I'm gonna snug up the lock ring. Perfect. Much, much better. Reasonable. Reasonable. It looks so minimally front heavy. Track stance. This looks good too. I hate to say it, but I really do in person think it needs mud flaps. It'll keep it tame, not too try hard, but it'll really help pull off these 245 40s. Because for a non mud flap, it's looking too rally to not have them. Test comes off pretty easy. Hose on. <laughs> Just water and a pressure washer. That wheel is looking clean. What the heck? Look at that. Ceramic coating is real. It's not a scam. All right, now let's do the hose test. Put it on jet is what we want. Probably won't work as good, but we'll see. Little spot right there. Yo, hold up, hold up. Bro, it's so good. It's not sticky, it's just piling up in there. Do you see that? I actually have never seen that before. All right, let's blast it. I wasn't planning on working on cars today, gosh dang it, I wore my white kicks. Hey, but they white bottom. What do we got? It could be a little better. It needs some pressure behind it, but it definitely helps. Look at all this water beating up. That's another part of it. Mmm. 
All them water beads. Structure washer does help, and the water beading off with the air. Maybe these wheels aren't so bad to clean. I have a controversial video for you to watch next, putting coilovers on a Focus RS because you lose the active dampening. You do have some lights and you're in some problems with some drive modes. There's super helpful comments on this video. I found out it's not all what it's cracked up to be. So if you want to buy a Focus RS in the future or you currently have one and you're not sure if you want to upgrade the suspension because you're sick of how it rides like it's on bricks, like I was, you just need to check this video out right here and go learn about it. It's interesting and it was a fun process.